From Railclone 4 onwards, the free light version is able to use the powerful segment deform tools that had previously been restricted to the Pro Edition. This makes the light version much more useful for a wide range of applications, especially if you're dealing with a site that isn't flat. For example, it's now possible to easily project a fence onto a surface, as you can see in this example. So in this quick tip tutorial, we just wanted to take a very simple piece of geometry and illustrate how the deform modes work so that you can start to use them in your own styles. In this example, I'll be using this segment to create a basic concrete staircase. The geometry has been designed to make it clear how the three different modes affect the deformation with obvious horizontal and vertical elements and the pivot's been placed on the outside edge. So knowing that, let's create the style. First of all, we'll create a new helix object to find the path of the staircase. With a helix, I always add a normalized spline modifier. This is because the helix spline primitive has linear edges by default. Adding this modifier allows us to convert them to curves in a way that maintains procedural control. Then create a new rail clone object and open the style editor. Create a new linear array and then add a spline node. From the properties panel, pick the helix from the scene. Wire the spline node to the generator's spline input. Add a segment node, and then from the properties panel, pick the step from the scene. Wire the segment node to the generator's default input. Select the segment node and tell Railclone to align the geometry using its pivot on the y-axis. You do this by changing the alignment y parameter to pivot. And that's the basic style done. So now we can experiment with the deform nodes. So in the default mode, which is called adaptive, the geometry's verticals are aligned perpendicular to the path. The geometry will also bank to follow the path. In this instance, this clearly isn't what we want. So let's change the mode to vertical. In this mode, the vertical elements remain upright, but the horizontal elements are deformed on the Z axis to match the elevation of the path. This is looking much better for this particular style although it doesn't really suit the stair treads. It's become more of a slide. So a better match for this would be the next mode, which is called Stepped. When this is selected, no deformations are applied at all on the Z-axis, and the segment preserves its vertical and horizontal alignment. So this has fixed the steps, but it might not be really what we want for the handrails. Ideally, what we want is for the top and the bottom of this geometry to follow the spline, with the step section remaining, well, stepped. Thankfully, Railclone has the ability to do this using two hybrid modes that combine the vertical and the stepped deformation algorithms. So first of all, you can create a vertical mode with a flat top and or a flat bottom. To do this, you would change the mode to vertical, and then you increase the flat bottom value. This parameter determines a zone measured from the bottom of the geometry that will remain stepped while the rest of the segment follows the spline using the vertical algorithm. If you were to increase the flat top value as well, you'll create a stepped effect at the top of the spline, leaving only the middle of the segment using the vertical mode. And you can see this evident in the way the lights continue to follow the helix, even though the top and bottom are stepped. This can be really useful, but it's the, kind of the opposite of what we want in this case. So let's take a look at the final option, which is a stepped mode with a vertical top or bottom. So change the mode to stepped and increase the vertical bottom value just a little so that the bottom of the stairs follow the helix. And the steps themselves should remain, well, stepped. You can then do the same for the top. Increase the vertical value until the top of the handrails follows the spline. Now what's happening now is that in between the top and the bottom, the area is still stepped as you can see by the treads on the stairs and the lights. What though if we wanted the lights to follow the helix? Well, that's easy. Just increase the vertical top value until the distance encloses that part of the geometry. And really, that finishes our little stairs example. We hope you can see that these options can be really useful for a wide range of styles. And remember, they're now available in Rail Clone Lite. And so is the ability to collapse the geometry to a mesh, which can be handy for exporting an object to a games engine or another application. We hope you found this tutorial useful. Please stay tuned for more quick tips coming soon.